This is chapter 1.3, Segments and Their Measures. Please take a few seconds to copy the cuts. All right, to begin, so let's start with some definitions. Postulates or axioms, rules that are accepted but are not proved. So if someone gives a postulate, it's just rules that are accepted. It's pretty much the norm, okay? However, there are theorems, for example, you know the Pythagorean theorem. That's a theorem that is proved. Somebody's done research, it is proved. Like um, theorems, postulates are also utilized in mathematics and taken for as proven. Even though they're not, they're taken and accepted even though they're not officially proved. When you go through geometry in these books, whenever you see a postulate or a theorem, commit it to memory because you're going to see it again in almost every chapter or two later. Okay? Coordinate or coordinate points. When a point on a line is called by its number. For example, looking at this number, we see two points on the, li on the number line. We see point A listed right here at 1. And we see point B listed right here at 4. Point A and B are just coordinates on this particular number line. You may remember ordered pairs or coordinate pairs from a graph with an X and Y. And as I stated, point A has a coordinate point of 1, where point B has a coordinate point of 4. The question is, what's the distance or the length between A and B? In other words, how far is B from A or how far is A from B? We can solve this a couple of different ways. To do that, to find the distance between A and B, we just take the difference an absolute value between the two. You have to do both. You have to take the difference, that's one, and the absolute value, that's two. Notice the word and, meaning both. You have to take the difference, subtraction, and the absolute value of both the points, the distance between the two. All right, so here we have. The distance between A and B is what? When we look at this, the equation says for us to take the absolute value of A, of B, excuse me, the absolute value of B minus A, the absolute value of B minus A. So what that should look like is sub by substitution, we have for B the value of 4, minus the value of A, which is 1. So the absolute value of 4 minus 1 equaling the absolute value of 3, and the absolute value of 3 is equal to 3. Now, it doesn't matter which order you go. You could have gone A minus B, the absolute value of A minus B. Let's try it. The absolute value of A minus B, and now using substitution, the value of A was 1. So the absolute value of 1 minus B, which is equal to 4, and we close our absolute value sign, that's going to equal 1 minus 4 is going to equal the absolute value of negative 3. We should remember that the absolute value symbols means you take the positive number even if it's negative. So negative 3 now becomes positive 3, which is the same thing we got here. Again, absolute value is going to always keep or make your number negative. Where here it was already positive, it just stayed positive. But in this case, we had negative 3 
and it just became positive 3. So absolute value is going to change your number from negative to positive if it's negative. And if it's already positive, it will stay, um, it will stay positive. Okay? Looking carefully. Okay? Find that the distance between two points is called the ruler postulate if we're using the ruler. This postulate, ruler postulate, you need to commit to memory. Write it down, copy it, study it, memorize it, and make sure that you know this particular postulate. Remember, postulates are not proven. However, they are utilized as such they are. Okay? So here we have this ruler. We see point A on our ruler at that particular location, and then we see B at this particular location. Looking carefully, we ask ourselves, what is the value of A? You hit pause and write this down if you need to look at that. The answer should be 3 centimeters. And yes, units should be listed. The next question, what is the value of B or the location on the ruler? And that answer should be 5 and 5 tenths centimeters. Okay. We want to know the distance, in other words, how far is B from A? How far is B from A or A from B? Okay. And to determine how far B is from A, we use the distance. You use that distance that we just used before, which is the absolute value of the B minus A. Or remember, you can switch it. It doesn't matter. The absolute value of A minus B. It doesn't matter. Well, if we substitute, we did B minus A, the absolute value down here. The absolute value of B minus A is equal to what? B is equivalent to 5 and 5 tenths minus A, which is the 3. So 5 and 5 tenths minus 3 equals the absolute value of this 2 and 5 tenths. And remember, absolute value means you always take the positive, which is 2 and 5 tenths distance from one another. Okay? 2 and 5 tenths centimeters away from one another. Moving forward. Well, what happens if we have both of the points on the number line and they're both negative. Now what do you do? Okay, now what happens? So here we have on this example, A is at negative 9, and B is now located at negative 3. How do we find the distance from A to B? How do we determine that? Using the equation from above, simply. Apply, uh, apply the ruler postulate. We need to know some specific distances. Okay? So what is the value of A as we stated? It is negative 9. And now we ask ourselves, what's the value of B? You should have written down negative 3. And using the ruler postulate theorem to find the distance... We should be taking the distance and the absolute value between the two. Okay, smart board doesn't want to cooperate with us. Okay, the absolute value of negative 9, remember, you still do minus, minus a negative 3. I'm doing B minus, um, the A minus B, A minus B this time. Absolute value of A, which is negative 9, minus the negative 3. And remember, minus a negative. What does minus a negative mean? It means add. So negative 9 plus a positive 3 should equal the absolute value of negative 6. And remember, when you do absolute values, it means that it's going to become a positive 6. Okay? We can also check this by counting. Just count the distances between the two. Let's see what happens. 
Okay, here we go. Starting at A, we moved one unit, two units, three units, four units, five units. There's six whole units. There is no negative distance between the two. The distance between two people or items is going to be a positive value. That's why you take the absolute value. That's why absolute value is going to be used because there's no negative distance between the two. You'll, that'll be discussed in some further classes. Okay. Looking further. Segment addition postulate. This is postulate number two. Question is, is this a rule or is it proven? Okay. This has not been proven, therefore we just use it as a postulate. Okay. Well, what if we have this line here? And again, we know it's a line because we have arrowheads on the end that go on forever. Suppose we have this line here, MP, with N in between M line MP. Right? If the distance between MN is 7 units and the distance between NP is 13, what's the distance between the entire thing MP? Let's look at that again. If I draw it out, what's, what's the distance between MN, which is 7, I'm talking about right here, this distance right here is 7. From here to there is 7 units. And what's the distance between NP? That means from here to here is going to be 13 units. Okay? MP, look at what, look what's given, NP, NP. Now, the question is, what's the distance between MP here? They want the entire distance between the two. There. Well, if you're looking carefully, you should see that you're able to add, as in segment addition, okay? We add the segment of MN plus the segment of NP to get the entire thing of MP. Okay, let's look at this. The total distance of MP is going to be 20 units. MP is 20 units because 7 plus 13 is equal to 20. MN by substitution is 7 plus the length of NP, which is the 13 we see there, and it's equal to the 20, or it's going to be equal to the MP. Okay, it's going to be equal to the MP and for your total length. So that means that MN plus NP will equal MP. Just use substitution. That's what we did. Instead of saying MN, we said 7. Instead of saying NP, we said 13 to find the total length of 20. Here's another example for us. We have a line segment such that this is XZ. How do we find the length of XZ? We can use a segment addition postulate. If the distance between XY, which is here, between these two, this distance, is 4, and the distance between YZ is also 4, YZ, look at what's given. They call out YZ, from Y to Z is 4. That means that the total distance between X and Z will be equal to 8. The question is, how so? Using segment addition postulate, we know that 4 plus 4 is equal to 8. Okay? We just substitute. Based on substitution, XY is 4 plus YZ is also 4, giving you the total length of XZ, which is 8. Okay, sometimes we use the number, sometimes we use the line segment. When I say 4 plus 4 equals 8, I'm using, I'm using the number. When I do XY, 
when I say xy plus yz equals this xz, now I'm using the segments instead of numbers. Okay? Since these two statements are true and interchangeable, where I use the number or I use the segment names, we can write this a couple of different ways. First of all, I can say that xy is congruent. That symbol means congruent to yz. It also means that if they're congruent, then that means that xy is equal to yz. And a lot of people like to say that congruent is exactly the same as equal. They're slightly different. Do not get them mixed up. We're going to talk about that. Okay? People use it um, all the time when they use segment addition postulate. They use it to find locations on the map. For example, if you leave from here to go to Baltimore and then you stop in between somewhere in Ohio, okay, you might drive a full ah, 47 miles somewhere in Ohio and then you drive another I don't even know how many miles I don't even know how far it is to Baltimore and you get your total miles here okay this would be considered segment addition postulate because you're using your distance from your first stop to get to Ohio and then from Ohio which is this second one here to get to Baltimore but anyway going back to a, the congruent and the equal segment congruence or congruent segments this is another definition you need to make sure you know have the same length when I say two segments are congruent as I did up here with y x y being congruent to y z they're not actually the same as equal it means similar but not exactly the same well what are you saying for example when I get ready to write these when I write xy is congruent to yz, what I'm saying in this particular case is that xy is the same size and same exact shape. In this case, it's the same exact length as yz. So congruence means same size, same shape, same length. I don't put a number in when I say congruent. However, when I say that xy is equal to yz and I use equal, the equal means use the real number. Where xy was 4, it's equal to the length of yz which was also 4. Equal means use the number. I want you to tell me how long. Is it 4 centimeters? Is it 4 feet? 18 feet? Equal means use the actual number. Use the actual number. Okay, again, congruent means that the two segments are the same length, same size, same shape, if you're talking about a shape. Co equal means use the number. Don't tell me they're the same size and same shape. Write the number 4 is equal to 4. So equal use numbers. Congruent means they're the same size and they're the same shape and they are slightly different.